Hey guys, I hope you all are doing good. This is Dr. Simran and you are watching Dentistry. Here at Dentistry, I make videos on dentistry and dental related topics. If you find these videos useful, please do consider subscribing and click the bell icon so that you get updates whenever I post a new video. So today we will be discussing about the anatomical landmarks in Maxilla. So stay tuned. So first of all, let's start with the limiting structures. The limiting structures determine and confine the extent of the denture as in they are limiting and telling us the limit of our cast or the limit of our denture. So firstly, let's see this elevation right here. So this elevation is the labial frenum. This labial frenum is nothing but a fibrous band that is covered by mucous membrane and extends from the labial aspect of the ridge to the and extends to the lip so it is called a labial frenum and it has no muscle attachment so is a passive frenum now followed by this elevation then we have this depression or the groove so this groove or the depression is called the labial vestibule as it has teeth gingiva or the ridge on one side and lip on the other side and hence it is called the labial vestibule and the orbicularis oris is the main muscle of the lip and that is attached to this vestibule okay Followed by this, there is again an elevation that is the buccal frenum. So, these are our buccal frenum. These can be single or multiple that varies from patient to patient. So, the muscles that influence its position are the orbicularis oris that is in front that we saw is in the labial vestibule. So, it pulls the buccal frenum in forward direction towards itself. And the buccinator muscle that is in the buccal vestibule, it pulls the frenum towards itself in the backward direction, towards more posteriorly. So, the buccinator muscle pulls the buccal frenum posteriorly and the orbicularis oris muscle pulls the buccal frenum anteriorly. Then again followed by this elevation is the depression that is the buccal vestibule behind the buccal frenum. So, this buccal vestibule extends from this buccal frenum till the hamular notch posteriorly. So, its size depends upon the contraction of the buccinator muscle, position of the mandible and the amount of bone loss in the maxilla. These all factors determine the uh, size of the buccal vestibule. Now, the hamular notch, it is a depression here. You can see in silver this is the depression that is present between the maxillary tuberosity. These are our maxillary tuberosities. So, it is present between the maxillary tuberosity and the hamulus of the medial pterygoid plate. It is an area of loose areolar tissues and the border of the dentures should extend till the hamular notch. Otherwise, if it is located anteriorly near the tuberosity, the denture will not be retentive as there will won't be any border seal. And the denture should also not be present posterior to this hamular notch area as the mucosa posterior to is, it is very thin. So, there is a thin mucous membrane and the patient will feel discomfort if it is extended posterior to the hamular notch. Now, this area in, is the posterior palatal seal area. This in blue, the cupid bow shape area is the posterior palatal seal area. And this area extends between the left and right hamular notch and it provides the posterior seal to the denture. So, these are our limiting structures and these forms the boundary of our cast. So, these are the labial frenum, the labial vestibule, buccal frenum, these are the buccal frenum, the buccal vestibule, then the hamular notch and the PPS area that is a posterior palatal seal area. This in blue that is the cupid bow shape that forms the posterior seal of the denture. So, now Let's move on to the stress bearing areas. Now, the stress bearing areas or the supporting structures, these are the load bearing areas and show minimal ridge resorption under constant load. Tension must be designed such that the most of the load is concentrated on these areas. The stress bearing areas are divided as primary stress bearing areas and secondary stress bearing areas. So, the primary stress bearing area is the maxillary tuberosity. This bulbous extension of the ridge you can see here in the red is the maxillary tuberosity. This area resorbs the least. So, it is the most important area of support. Okay. 
Now the another one is the posterior lateral slopes of the heart palate. So this is our entire heart palate and these areas right here are the posterior lateral slopes of the heart palate. So this is the posterior lateral slope of the heart palate. This area is resilient and the trabecular pattern in the bone over here is perpendicular to the direction of the force making it capable of withstanding the forces without getting much resorbed. So it is a primary stress bearing area that is the maxillary porosity and the posterior lateral slopes of the heart palate. Now the secondary stress bearing areas are the palatine rugae. These are our palatine rugae. These are the mucosal folds that are located in the anterior region of the palatal mucosa. And these folds play an important role in speech. Then we have the residual alveolar ridge. This area in the dark blue. You can see this is the residual alveolar ridge. This is the portion of the alveolar ridge and the soft tissue that remains after the removal of the teeth. So the submucosa over the ridge has adequate resiliency to support the tension. So the crest of the ridge may act as a secondary stress bearing area. Now let's see the relief areas. As the name suggests we should provide relief to these areas. These areas resorb under constant load or contain fragile structures and are not resilient enough to bear the stresses. So the first one is the incisive papilla. So this is our incisive papilla right here. It is the exit point of the nasopalatine nerves and vessels and it should be relieved because otherwise the denture will compress the nerves and vessels and lead to the pain and inflammation. And this will ultimately progress to paresthesia and necrosis later on if the relief isn't there. Now the next is the mid palatine raphe. So this is the mid palatine raphe. This is a median suture where the two palatine shelves meet and this is covered by the thin submucosa. So it should be relieved as it is the most sensitive part of the palate to pressure. Now the next is the fovea palatina. So it is formed by the collisions of the ducts of several mucosal glands and it is anterior to the PPS area that is a posterior palatal seal area. It is located anterior to it. The denture can extend 1 to 2 mm beyond the fovea palatina. The mucosal secretions of the fovea spreads a thin film on the denture and thereby aiding in the retention. But if the patient has thick ropey saliva, this area should be left uncovered because otherwise there will be increase in the hydrostatic pressure and there will be displacement of the denture. So, these are our relief areas. This is the incisive papilla, the mid palatine raphe and the fovea palatina. So let's summarize all the landmarks of the maxilla. First of all, we have the limiting structures. So what are the limiting structures? The labial frenum, labial vestibule, buccal frenum, buccal vestibule, then the hamular notch and the posterior palatal seal area. Okay. Then we have the supporting structures or the stress bearing areas. So there can be primary stress bearing areas or secondary stress bearing areas. So the primary stress bearing areas are the maxillary tuberosity and the posterior lateral slopes of the hard palate. Then we have the secondary stress bearing areas that is the residual ridge and the rugae area. These are our rugae area. Okay. Then we have the relief area that is our incisive papilla, mid palatine raphe and fovea palatini. Also if there is presence of palatine torus that is there is a bony elevation right over here in the palatal bone. So we should also relieve it and it is just a bony elevation. So that is all about the anatomical landmarks of the maxilla. I hope you like this video and if you do please show some love by giving it a big thumbs up and also share it with your friends to make their life easier as well and do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more such content. Also if you have any queries or questions or you want me to cover any other new topic you can tell me on my Instagram handle the link for which is there in the description down below and any kind of feedback is highly appreciated. See you until next time. Thank you.